Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach <clears throat> repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. 
Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother's sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Loving God, as we enter this Advent season, may we open the dark places in our lives and our memories to the healing light of Jesus Christ. Show us the creative power of hope. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the peace of Christ. Amen. You may be seated.
A reading from the second letter of Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In the beginning, that's how Mark begins his gospel, the first of the three gospels to be written down, or the four gospels to be written down. That's how the Bible begins, in the beginning, even in Genesis. Those three words bring us to expect something quite unexpected in the beginning. On Friday, I experienced a kind of beginning of sorts. A person asked to meet for coffee to discuss what it might be like for her and her household to explore Christianity. What would it be like to consider beautiful, historical, poetical, mystical, musical, storied, unexpected things together? She was anxious. I mean, in a church? To begin questioning ideas and possibilities and creeds and creations that so often seem well beyond even the most seasoned of churchgoers' grasp. A virgin birth, resurrection, creation. I mean, are these things real? And so our conversation landed in this really surprising place when my friend asked, well, if I were to come to church, I mean, maybe we could try yours. What are the rules? And so I, I gave her this, constitutions and canons. I said, read this and get straight back to me. <laughs> of course, I didn't do that. Yet I heard in her question the bit about church rules, the anxieties that come with a beginning. We all carry around anxieties about whether we'll walk in at the right time, wearing the right clothes, with the right attitude, with the right knowledge, with the right equipment, with all the right stuff to fit in. We wonder if maybe we might add chaos to order and would much prefer not to unsettle anyone or any institution too much if we can help it. This is the same posture as people take on their first day of school, first day of work, first date, just about a first anything. What are the rules? The question, though, assumes that the goal of church is to announce from altar and pulpit that God's after you, rather than Jesus Christ is for you. The sort of underlying threat, rather than a posture of hope, that if somehow you don't get the rules right or the rules followed, that somehow you don't belong. Isn't that why I add those notes to our service booklet on page two? There, there's more than just directions to the nearest restroom in that short list. Our notes are meant to help new, newcomers start nodding along from the beginning, saying, well, yes, I suppose there could, in fact, be a place for me here. Yet our scripture readings today answer our anxieties about rules and regulations with what God has always been doing creating order out of chaos with God's best tools, which are rightly hope and promise. In our gospel reading today, people went to John, that wild, lawless-looking man who strung his homemade camel furs together with a belt and ate bugs. People went out to be baptized by this guy in the river. Mark writes that people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him baptized by him in the river, confessing their sins. What a strange baptism. It's not the one we practice here. In other words, the baptism of John included people saying, we're worried that we're doing it all wrong. We've left things done and undone. Straighten us out. Show us the rules. Help us to fly right. We promise to do better. We will be better. They were looking for rules. And John's response Buckle your seatbelt. Look forward to something more life-giving than a rule book. Look to Isaiah, who says in our first reading, comfort, comfort now, my people. And lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, don't fear. And how God will feed his flock like a shepherd, and he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them close. 
How in this psalm, God announces you have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out their sins. And how mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness, have pe righteousness and peace have kissed one another. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from the heaven. The so-called rules of church is in fact to become equipped with ears to hear God's promises. We come here not because God demands it, but because we know like we're being invited to the best party on earth that we are going to be given ears here, which results in hearts of hope. My friend's question about the rules of church gets turned inside out, where it's not on you or any institution to get ready for God. In church, at altar and pulpit, if we're arguing about those rules, we've lost the point. Rather, God is in the business of getting you ready for God's own arrival with God's grace and God's peace. We are completely passive to the game. Like John says, there's this one coming who's going to startle you, who brings power and spirit that will in fact make order seem like chaos, which is what happens every single time I announce that in the name of Jesus Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. All of them, you might wonder, well, what about that guy? And what about that one over there that seems to be following the rules? Would God include her? To which God says, yes, all of them and all of you. God is in the comfort business. God's in it for hope now and for life in the world to come. God enters the world in Jesus Christ, lifting valleys and leveling the ground, making rougher places plain with rules of promise, of comfort, and of mercy. God is not after you with threats. God, through Jesus Christ, is for you with promise. The rule of this church, of this place, of this community, of this communion, is that Jesus Christ is with you and for you, that Jesus Christ loves you and nothing will ever change that. This one who is coming at Christmas, he is your beginning. Amen. Please rise and join with me in proclaiming our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Prayers of the people are in your Book of Common Prayer on page 392. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, 
and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Michael Curry, our providing bishop, and Ketlin Solak, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, which we name before aloud or in the silence of our hearts, Hear us, O Lord, your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, which we name before, aloud, or in the silence of our hearts. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, which we name before aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, Arlene Roberts. your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We also pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. <laughs> so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God has mercy on you, forgives you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthens you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keeps you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. That's peace, everybody. That's peace, folks. Morning, everybody. We're so glad to be worshiping together this second Sunday in Advent. I also want to offer a brief note of gratitude. Thank you so much for your grace, your kindness, and care. Uh, I was pretty sick, and so many of you prayed and checked in, and I am so appreciative that we are part of such a generous congregation. I'm also aware that there were a number of other people suffering with various illnesses to include the dreaded COVID and you were all busy praying for them and checking in on them too. And so this is a church and a community that we should be so proud of, that we offer the kind of comfort that Isaiah speaks to in both large ways and in ways that go as close as our own people. 
I want to let you know that next week indeed is our Christmas pageant that will be taking the place of the regular sermon. There will be no Mary Mag service at 9.30. There will be simply a 10.30 service. We are going to enjoy the Christmas pageant directly following the gospel reading. And then directly following the service, there's going to be a new member brunch. So those of you who would consider yourselves new members over the past year to year and a half, this brunch is in your honor. And we're so excited to serve you, feed you, welcome you, and get to know you better with name tags. <laughs> I also want you to be aware that outside the church are posted all of the information that you need regarding our Christmas, our holiday plans, moving toward uh, Blue Christmas service on the 21st, Christmas Eve Eve on the 23rd. That is specifically for people who might be going out of town and want to celebrate together with your church community. Or those of you who have special family plans on the 24th, please come to Eve Eve if the Eve service won't work for you. We have a four o'clock service. It will look exactly like the next day service, uh, including the candlelit silent night. We will have a 4 o'clock p.m. service uh, on Christmas Eve as well as a 10 p.m. service. And so any more information you need about it, there's flyers outside both doors. There's all of the signage outside. And then uh, we also, by the way, sorry, I missed this. For the new member brunch, we still need volunteers to help set up with kitchen preparation, and with cleanup on the actual day, the preparation and, and the setup is going to happen on Saturday, December 16th at 3 o'clock p.m. If you would like to sign up to help with that, please contact Lee Hart or Becca Stallings. And so we really need the help and we would appreciate seeing you. Lastly, we have two points of celebration in our community. May Cody is just about to graduate with her degree in physical therapy. <laughs> And we have our littlest member, Teddy, in the back, who's here in church, and we're so glad to see him. <laughs> Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offering and come into his courts. Mm -hmm.
is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you gave him, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness out of death into life. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as oft as you drink it, for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body and blood of Jesus Christ and the blood of his new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country with Isaiah, Peter, Mark, and everyone who needs to be comforted on this earth, that we may enter into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and receive them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated. Amen.
us rise. Let us pray. Eternal God, uh, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously, graciously accepted, us accepted us as living members, as members of, of your Son, Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And you have fed you us fed with spiritual us. food in the sacrament, in the sacrament of, his of his body and blood. Send us now Send us to the world in peace and grant us and strength and courage to love and serve, love and serve you with gladness and gladness singleness and singleness. of heart. Christ, Christ, our Christ our Lord. Amen. Particularly as a parent, I recognize that rules of life are helpful to order our days and our communities. However, God, in God's grace, is lawless. With God's indiscriminate forgiveness and love, know that the rule of this worship service is to fill you up with everything that you need to trust that you are created for life and for goodness and that God is with you now and forever. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.